This is a lecture about the agricultural revolution. Humans as we know them have been walking around for about 200,000 years. Yet despite having bigger brains and finer hands, we continue to behave as our predecessors had. This was a nomadic lifestyle, following herds, gathering wild plants and fruits along the way. Then about 10,000 years ago, we came to a divide. On this side, we had the nomadic hunter-gatherer lifestyle we'd always known. On the far side, we had settled agriculture. The differences between these two are simple, but as we shall see, they have lasting implications. As a nomad, you must find your food. Since you must find your food, you must be able to move before your food sources are depleted, or when your food walks away. Since you must be able to move, you can only store as much food as you can carry. Storage is made even more difficult for your nomad because if you're a nomad you eat mostly meat, which has a high nutritional value, but is rather hard to preserve and store. Now let's look at the other side of the divide. As a farmer, you make your own food. In fact, you can produce more food than you can eat. This is called a surplus. Since growing crops takes time, you must stay put to care for your crops. Since you're not going anywhere anyway, you have the option of storing lots of food. And storage is made easy for farmers because farmers eat very little meat, but a lot of grains, which have a low nutritional value, but are very easy to store and preserve. So when droughts hit and the hunting is bad, Nomads must move along or starve to death, while farmers can survive off the surpluses they stored. Yet there are other effects of agriculture besides mere survival. The most obvious is that when you have more food, you can make more people. And because one farmer can feed several people, this makes possible the division of labor. Instead of every man being a hunter-gatherer concerned only with getting enough food for himself, now one can be a baker, another a carpenter, another a soldier. With specialization come new technologies, which allow us to produce even greater surpluses and larger populations. The greater the surplus one farmer can produce, the more labor can be divided, and that allows for even more improvements in technologies, which in turn allow for still greater surpluses and larger populations. This is what is called a positive feedback loop. We can see the results clearly. These days, a single farmer with the aid of technology can feed thousands. With all those surpluses, the world's population has passed 7 billion. Now, as well as carpenters and bakers, we have firemen, doctors, and astronauts. It should be clear by now how settled farmers ended up displacing nomadic hunters. But just for fun, let us compare a Roman soldier to a barbarian warrior. The barbarian warrior grew up eating nutritious meat, allowing him to reach his full growth potential. The Roman soldier, with his diet of bread and olives, is malnourished and stunted by comparison. He's small and he's fat, and it looks like he's about to get creamed. But because agriculturalists can support a larger population, there are more Roman soldiers than there are barbarian warriors. Moreover, every Roman soldier is a specialist. Freed from the need to feed himself, they have spent their time mastering the art of soldiering. And because they're all specialists, they can develop new technologies. The barbarian warrior doesn't stand a chance. This sort of dominance would be impossible without the massive surpluses of food derived from the agricultural revolution. So it seems like we made the right choice in becoming agriculturalists. However, modern studies have begun to show that this exchange cost us more than just a healthy diet. In our next lecture, we will explore some of the unintended consequences of the agricultural revolution.